Welcome back, everyone. This is David A. Cox here with my co-host, Ben Pegg. And in this short tutorial video, we're going to start to talk a little bit about loops and how you can use them and how you can manipulate them, change the timing, and uh, even change their key. So Ben, take it away. Great, David. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is extend the length of this loop that we have from our previous video. It's an upbeat electric piano. Um, you'll notice when I move the cursor along the edge to extend it, it's the difference between extending the track and then cycling the track. So cycling just means it's repeating itself. So we're going to make it repeat itself twice. And that's a pretty good length. Another thing is when we're manipulating these things, we're probably going to want it to continuously replay while we're changing things like pitch and tempo. So if you drag and click along the top, you'll have this loop length cycle. So I'm just going to leave it here uh, at the end of this two cycle loop. And I want to add some drums to this. So I'm going to go into all the drum loops by clicking all drums. And then let's try this under pressure. Okay, that sounds like it's going to fit in perfectly. And I'm going to do the same with this, dragging it with the loop cycle tool. So Ben, can we just kind of let them hear how this sounds as is, just so they have an idea of how it changes over time? All right, so let's just hit play. It feels like if we were going to add lyrics, the next words would be, oh yeah. Anyways, okay, go ahead, Ben. <laughs> Perfect. So right now it's an F major, and it's at 90 beats per minute. So let's try to make it a little bit less, oh yeah, and a little bit like... Heck yeah, or something. <laughs> so let's go up to something. Let's go to C major, and let's do 120 beats per minute. And I'm going to hit play again. Now, now it's more, yeah. OK. <laughs> so we've, we've gone from, yeah, to, yeah. To All right. 3, All right. So we're, we just want to show you that what's great with these electronic instruments is you can completely manipulate them and they'll just adjust themselves to whatever beat, whatever tempo, whatever key you want. And what's also amazing, it's worth mentioning, is that the number of loops that come with GarageBand are insane. Um, now, it actually, the, the software itself only comes with some. But it should be noted that if you uh, go into GarageBand, if you go up to where it says GarageBand up here, uh, by default up here somewhere it would say, we've already done it, um, but there's an option to download additional loops. Um, we've done that. It's a 17, is it 17 or 14? 14. Oh, sorry, 14 gigabyte file. So be prepared to wait for that one to finish. Um, and make sure you have plenty of space on your hard drive once you do that. So if you want to uh, kind of up your game, uh, this is a great way to do it. You know, you don't, you've noticed we have not touched a keyboard, I mean, other than the, you know, regular keyboard here. But we haven't played a piece of music. We're just using these tools in order to create music. And then uh, you kind of just go from there. Excellent. Yeah. And of course, when you're working with real instrument tracks, like you're going to add a real guitar, real vocals, um, you know, using these tempos can make some of these these beats, these drum beats, really flexible to work with some material that you may be creatively coming up with. I've known people that have made demos using some of these these drum beats uh, along with their music uh, to just to give their their prospective drummer an idea of what they'd like to be played on their track. Fantastic. So check out some of our other short tutorial videos all about GarageBand. It is very complex software, so please have fun with it. Uh, it, it is, uh, there's a lot to it. And uh, that's all for us for today, everyone. So hope you enjoyed this. Leave us your feedback in the comments section below, and we'll see you next time. That's all. Take care. Class dismissed.